Greetings YouTube, Kunis here, and welcome to episode 16 of this Let's Play in Crusader Kings 2 for the Navari's Meritocracy attempt. Where we last left off, we were ostensibly just waiting for our dear grandmother to kick the bucket so we can get all of her kingdoms, and we narrowly escaped certain death by sheer chance, and I also played it a little badly, but things came out okay in the end, because we were lucky. So, we will continue on this path, while also continuing to attempt to increase our holdings in Ireland. Why do I have these guys raised up? So, increase our holdings in Ireland, which is not happening because claims are just not being fabricated fast enough. But that's okay, because Ireland is merely a hobby. The meat of our interest lies in Hispania, still. Um, do we have a truce with this guy? I think we do. No, no we don't. We could go to war with him. I do remember my military being somewhat exhausted from, you know, repelling uh, that adventurer threat. Um, so we could get up to 8,000 troops. We currently have 6,000. This guy has uh, 8,000 troops. He can go up to 10,000. So he's technically stronger than us. A slightly worrisome realization. Um, our retinue is also pretty much down the drain, so we might be able to match him troop for troop, given time. Um, in the meantime, however, we can't really accomplish much. Can we build more retinue? Yes, we actually can. Let's build more retinue. We don't have money. Okay, let's wait for some money to come in and build more retinue. Because really, we gotta wait one way or the other. We need that goal. We also need Italy to split up, which it's supposed to do. I believe, once she kicks the bucket, um, because, well, actually all of this will not find its way into Italy, and this guy will inherit State Inquisitor of Italy? He will inherit the Grand City of La Marche, and he will inherit House Carling. Oh, we got a Jewish guy. Okay, let's be happy. He has a weak claim on the most serene republic of Italy. What about Aquitaine? Where the hell is Aquitaine? Guillaume... Yeah, it's a different guy. So Aquitaine is going to a different guy. So this guy has not sired any children of his own, and Aquitaine is... Uh, different laws than, you know, a republic system. So, yeah, we have succeeded accidentally, while, you know, just trying to inherit these kingdoms, to split up Aquitaine and Italy into different entities. Will it go back to France, though? No, different guy. Yeah, different guy. So essentially, France and Italy and Aquitaine will all split up again. Uh, you're a Berber Druze. Go to the Oubliette. Problem solved. Uh, we do seem to almost have enough money. Yes, for another chunk of retinue. Military. Uh, most excellent. Uh, why can't we? Oh, there we go. We have afforded an extra chunk of light cavalry retinue. Horses! Horses are the future! <laughs> so we're making a lot of money still, which is good. Um, we did set up an anti-pope last time. I'm kind of getting back into it because it's been too long for me to. Um, we do have an anti-pope, who is my vassal, who adores me. The real Pope hates us, but he doesn't matter anymore. The moral authority of the Catholic faith is still way too high. Largely because, well, we've been winning a lot of, um... A lot of holy wars. 54% of that moral authority is from one holy wars. So, yeah, we're gonna have to lose holy wars. But I don't... I, I personally don't want to lose holy wars. It just means I'll have to stop waging them for all. I can't do that. I need to beat this guy at least out of Spain. Let's be realistic. So, we're gonna have to find another way to weaken the Catholic fate. Um. Ooh, lots of moolah! Hooray! Let's spend it on more retinues because retinues are awesome. My half sister is a cool person. She can get married to this uh, bastard, so that, you know, um, more people of our dynasty, better choice. 
Sounds good. Sounds quite good. Marriage has been approved. Uh, we have made our cousin the next hair in line. She's 23. She is Midas touched, which makes her awesome. Apparently it's a regular marriage, but it doesn't matter because the they're both of the same dynasty, so they're being like inbred a little, but it doesn't matter. Inbreeding is fine here and there. We'll be all right. We won't have to uh, go through an inbred homosexual empress again. That was a pain. That was quite a fun pain, though. That was hilarious. It's also a great story to tell people. You know, when I run into someone who actually plays Crusader Kings 2, I get to be like, Yeah, I once I once played as an inbred homosexual empress. That was fun. Everything went to shit, like, in five seconds. But not in this game. It was in a different game, in a different timeline. For we are rewriting history again. And in this history, the Byzantine Empire did not get crushed by the 1.07 update. In fact, it doesn't seem like it's going to at all. It just seems like, it's like, I'm gonna expand. I'm gonna keep expanding. It's like, hum. And then there's these guys who somehow took a chunk of it. They somehow took Armenia. Oh, we have a claim! We have a claim on Tommond! We have a claim on Tommond! We can, we can totally push our claim. We're broke. We can't push our claim. Alright, let's wait. Because we're broke. We're totally going to push our claim. Oh, and there's Adlan's O's that we'll have to contend with. But that's acceptable. Oh, someone fabricating claims? Make him disappear. Who cares? Oh, Bethrode can marry. Bethrode can marry. Oh, I can get I can get married to a genius. Yes. And she's an underhanded rogue, which 5%... Oh. I mean, you're craven and arbitrary, but you're diligent genius. I think nice things are gonna come of this. Let's get married. Yeah! Oh, he's dead! Good! Chancellor deleted. Success! Oh, we can make money! And with this money, we can go to war! Aidan's host. We'll have to beat down Aidan's host, but it's okay, we have an amazing retinue. In fact, I think our retinue alone can do it. But can we raise enough boats? Boats. No boats. Boats? Two boats. No boats. No boats at all! Four boats. Where are my boats? No boats. I have boats. Three boats. No boats. No boats. And no boats. This is where we're sad. Because we can only raise, like, 19 boats. Yay, ambition to get married succeeded. Let's be more ambitious. Let's, uh, make our diplomacy score not suck. That's an admirable goal. We should probably want to have children, too. That'd be great. But, you know, he's 22, she's 16. They have a lot of time. Oh, Kinswoman's a misguided warrior. Let's get her married. I'm pretty nearly to, uh... Well, this guy. Let's get the boats united. Still, wait. Maybe we can have more boats from Ireland. Nope. And nope. Never mind. False alarm. Can we build boat buildings? A uh, city shipyard. I don't have money to afford more shipyards, I guess. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of missing boats. Could have a city that gives us even more boats. Of course, the thing is, a lot of these people hate us. This guy doesn't, though, but he doesn't have a shipyard. And I can't make them buy a shipyard. Well then. Alright. Wait, what about Marrakesh? Which is actually our holdings. No boats. Nope. 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 No boats anywhere. Could build castle shipyards. That'd be great. We're gonna have to beat to, to build some boats. We're gonna have to become a naval empire. Oh, a scolding! How dare he! Let's have someone react to it. Ooh, someone likes us. Our scolding was just. 
Okay, no, can I split these guys? Split in half. You get on boats. Let's ferry you to Ireland. We have more boats coming, apparently. Boats are in Ireland. I hope we won't need that retinue soon. I so hope we won't need that retinue soon. Now, Grandmother, why aren't you kicking the bucket faster? I mean, she is Queen Elvira the Great. She's not a bad person. She actually conquered things that will belong to us, so, you know, she is a nice person. But we need her to die so we can have more power. Hmm. This is where, like, I'm gonna be doing some very slow expansion while we wait for an actual opportunity in the Umayyads. Because we are powerful, we're definitely much bigger than we were when we only had one province. Actually, two provinces. We also had Alto Aragon, and actually, I think we also started with Zagoro Zaragoza. Anyway, we started with this little chunk here, or at least this, and we've grown a lot, but we're still not that powerful, which is kind of sad. But, let's move our Chancellor. Chancellor expansion is so slow, so very slow. I'm gonna wait until their conquest is over. I'm gonna dismiss our boats for now. Not like we'll need them anytime soon. Hopefully. Hopefully our retinue will triumph against that. It's all crappy units anyway. We have horses! Although our horses would probably benefit from having leaders. So let's assign some leaders. Leaders above 8 are a good thing. Leaders below 8 are a bad thing and you're better off leaving a 0 because that's how the game mats it. I was surprised to find that out. But yeah, it's actually like... An incompetent leader is much worse off than letting the troop, like, pretty much lead itself. Oh, we have 180 gold. Can we afford, like, boats? I need shipbuilding, at least level 1. Technology! Isn't shipbuilding one? It's one in my capital. But I already have a castle shipyard. I need shipbuilding at least two. And build ship building at least two. Yeah. All right, let's build. Let's do that. It's kind of a waste of points, but uh, I need boats. This is ridiculous. More boats. Seven more boats. It should allow us to raise boats and be able to ferry all of our new retinue. It's not an investment I like doing because military organization is just too strong, especially since retinues are just too strong. Like, the more I've been playing these days, the more I just feel bad using retinues these days. Because, oh, okay, okay. Tummond has flipped. Tummond has no defenses. There's a new guy on the block. He has event spawn troops. But we have an OP retinue. Charge! Going to battle. Totally winning. It's actually not even close. Horses! Horses are amazing. Where is he retreating to? It doesn't matter. We're gonna stack wipe him. There we go. Now let's siege Tummond. Have to remember the ratios for assault are different in this game than in EU4. Which I know I've been saying for a while I'm gonna start a new series, but I really will. Really. It's just. I still need a few more things to line up before I have the extra time I expect to allow me to run multiple series because, you know, I'm still technically a salaried employee, so I have other responsibilities to attend to. This is still pretty much a hobby, which I hope you guys enjoy as much as I do, because this is damn fun. So, I do envy those people on YouTube, though, who make a living out of, you know, playing games in some way. I know it's hard because they have to play the games that, you know, fans expect and 
they have to output a lot of videos to actually make a proper living out of it. But, you know, the grass is always greener on your side and there's something to, to be said about being paid to play video games. That just, you know, it's better than game testing. You know, we're game testing, you're not actually playing video games, you're testing video games. It's a huge difference. I know, I speak from experience. Um, yeah, oh, did our, did our name just change? Did we... I, I feel like there's something in there that wasn't ours before. Maybe I'm just imagining things, because we definitely got... Metola is part of Beja, which is the jour this. This is part of Civi. No, I guess we always had that. I just never noticed that my name was now, like, making a half circle, being all fancy. But yeah, so game testing and game playing are two completely different things. So, yeah, I think it's kind of interesting to be able to, that, like... YouTube allows people to make a living out of just playing games and having other people enjoy watching them playing games and sharing, like... Because, really, when I started doing these videos, I didn't really consider being able to make a living. I just really loved Crusader Kings 2 and had no friends in my vicinity who played it, and I figured, well, you know, I could play the game and find people who enjoy the game, and then we can discuss it on, like... YouTube comments or something, which is, I've actually been putting a lot of effort into replying to people who reply on my videos. I like creating that kind of engagement and just like, when people point out my mistakes, like, someone commented two videos ago, like, the reason one of my holy wars ended was because the Umayyads converted to, like, something other, like, I think they were Druze and converted to Sunni, or went, like, they were Sunni and went Druze and now they're back to Sunni or something. But because their religion changed, my holy war was no longer valid, even though I was still technically killing them in the name of Jesus. Um, they weren't believing the same version of Allah, so somehow that invalidated my reason for going to war. Oh, he's surrendering. Alright. Well, fine. Mine. Probably could have made that faster, but I wasn't really in any hurry. So, let's invite a holy man and have him rule in Navarre in Tumund. How how will you pronounce this? Otkzoa? Otkzo the Arcos? Interesting name. Very interesting. I'd like to know how to properly pronounce his name. That is definitely an interesting name. Um hmm. So Ulster is getting big. Ulster is probably challenging us to becoming King of Ireland. We've also expanded in a chunk of Scotland, which is really interesting to see Ulster being strong right now. I mean, usually... Huh. England is looking pretty fine. I mean, usually, like, the Vikings just, like, tear England a new one. But now it seems the Vikings have, like, completely calmed down. And it's only 939. We're not even in the thousand yet. You know, normally, like, in, like, a hundred years, there's, like... Duke of Normandy, who's like, yeah, England's mine, let's go to war, and then he wins and he kicks their asses, but, uh, you're, normally, when you start playing from the Vikings, playthrough, no one ever really unites England, and it starts to look like a really massive mess really quickly. But not in this case. In this case, England is looking like, well, three separate smaller kingdoms, and Wales, so I guess four separate smaller kingdoms. Which I know Wales is technically a kingdom in its own rights, even though it's as big as like Wessex or Mercia. In fact, it's a bit smaller, but I mean, no offense to the Welsh. But yeah, land mass size smaller. That was my point. How's my? I'm gonna wait until this is done before I even bother raising boats. And I'll be able to raise 13 galleys just for me. Then maybe people will have liked me more too, because I've done something awesome. Like, take a piece of land. Be like, yeah! You just took it from your ancestor? You illegitimately pushed a claim for yourself? Adventurers? Well, screw you, I hate adventurers. That is actually my thought process. Uh, a princess of East Francia? She wants to marry a ruler? Well, let's just get her married to some nobody instead. At least he's of our dynasty, which makes him more awesome! Alright. 
Oh, I was going to first settle my horse and chase after the bandits who had stolen one of the valuable chalices from our own church. When I returned exhausted and fit filthy clothes, it was told the old priest had simply misplaced the chalice. He appreciated my effort, at least. What? Apparently I put myself in danger with bandits. Man, I'm awesome! Hmm. So this castle shipyard is almost done. And let's see our opportunities. How united and strong are the Umayyads? You're hostile towards something. I can still go to war with you. You have less total troops and less current troops. Meanwhile, my forces have largely regenerated, so now I am slightly stronger than him. Which means it is time for war once our troops return from Ireland. Come on, boats. Finish yourselves. Let's actually just uh, raise our fleet levies. Like uh, every vassal fleet that we have. Just 21 boats. And pretty soon, in like three months, we'll have finished a castle shipyard level 2, which can house more boats, and it'll magically already have those extra boats. Awesome! It says skilled shipwrights are hard at work. We are building all sorts of seafaring vessels. Excellent. We definitely need our seafaring vessels for a grand spanning empire. Which is actually technically just a kingdom. But very soon, it will become an empire. Hmm. I'm going to have some dukes, though. We're going to inherit a bunch of dukes. I hate dukes. Dukes can vote. Hate the power of voting, being in other people's hands. It's totally unacceptable. Only we get to vote on. Oh, who is this guy? Mayor Alfonso? He's a good guy. He's not a heretic. Let's give him a pat on the back. Oh, well, some people down here need to convert. Like, uh. Oh! They are. They did convert. Great! Got Druze province. Let's convert that. Anti Atlas. Marrakesh is properly Catholic now. Excellent. Excellent. So, how's our boats? Our boats should be ready. Castle Shipyard. That's right, our boats are ready. 26 boats. Excellent. Let's go get our retinue. Maybe we can even declare a war already and just, like, surprise boat drop. That's a bad idea. Because of the naval landing penalty. But it would still be awesome! Surprise horses! Let's go here. Where Retinue will be poised to strike at his capital. And we'll want Granada. Because Granada is nice and big. Why aren't people kicking the bucket? This guy is still alive. This grandmother of mine is still alive at 65. They need to die. We need them to die. Hmm. Good. Something good has happened. Conversion. But is it a province? I don't think it's the province. It wasn't that fast. No, it wasn't the province. Okay. Cavalry made it. We don't need the boats anymore. What we do need is a war against this guy. Yeah, now he is currently still weakened. Alright! And he has a troop here that we'll be able to squish on day one. Let's wait for some time to pass. And I actually forgot to press start on my timer. I am a genius. But I think it, I'm actually really close to the end of a video, so I'm actually going to use this opportunity to cut this one maybe a little bit short, and I apologize if you guys like my consistent videos, but that's because in the next video, we're going to go to war with this guy. We're going to kick him in the face and be like, hey, meet our horses. Our horses are awesome. And I'm going to raise our, the rest of our troops and, you know, kick him with, ha with that too. But first, the horses. It's going to be awesome. Look forward to it. So I will thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time where we go to war with the Umayyads.